So we are doing dividing polynomials today. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do some long division, some synthetic division, some synthetic substitution, and figuring out whether or not something is a factor, okay? Um, that sounds like a lot, but there's only 12 slides. Get over it. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand of the places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. Dividing polynomials. I could read this, but it's just going to be gibberish to you. Let's just get into it. Get into it. Anyway, um, yeah, get into it. First thing that you want to do is you want to set up for, so we're going to do long division first. Um, so you are going to set up your, um, the bigger part under, but you have to do it in descending order. And if there's any gaps, you want to fill in the gaps. What does that mean? So descending order means biggest exponent first. So the cube is the biggest. So I want to make sure the two Y cubed comes first and then the negative Y squared. And then there's no Y term. So I'm going to fill it in and put zero Y. And then I'm going to put the plus 25. Okay. So for this to work, number one, it needs to be in descending order. And number two, uh, if there's any gaps in the exponents, you want to fill them in with a zero. Sips tea. Anyway, it's not tea, it's actually water. Uh, so then you're going to put the divisor on the outside. So uh, y minus 3, okay? <sighs> Here we go. The first question that you're going to ask yourself is, what times y equals 2y cubed? So you're just looking at that y on the outside. What times y equals 2y cubed, okay? Um, so that is going to be 2y squared. 2y squared times y equals 2y cubed. So once you figure that out, you put that up at the top and line it up. So because you got 2y squared as your answer, you're going to put it on top of the squared, the other squared term. So then I'm going to multiply that by the y. Um, and then I'm going to multiply it by the negative 3 also on the outside. So 2y times y, 2y squared times y is 2y cubed. And then 2y squared times negative 3 is negative 6y squared. So you're going to subtract now. Put that in parentheses and subtract. So... 2y cubed minus 2y cubed is going to cancel out. That's how I know I'm doing it correctly. Okay? And then I'm going to have negative y squared minus minus 6y squared. Minus minus turns into a plus. Okay, so that's how I got 5y squared. Take a deep breath. And we're going to start the process over again. Okay? So I'm gonna bring down the zero y, I'm gonna bring down the 25, and I'm gonna ask the same question, but now looking at the five y squared. What times y, that y on the outside, what times y equals five y squared? Five y. Five y times y equals five y squared. This is good. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna multiply it, right? Five y times y equals five y squared, five y times negative three, equals negative 15y. Yay. Parentheses, subtract. 5y squared minus y squared. Great. Cancels out. I love it when that happens because that means we're doing it right. And then 0 minus minus 15y. What is minus minus? Plus. So 15y. Great. Bring down the 25. Take one last deep breath. Start the process again. <laughs> This time, looking at that bottom 15y plus 25. What is y times 15y? Sorry. What times y equals 15y? What times y equals 15y? 15. 15 times y equals 15y. Great. Multiply that. 15 times y equals 15y. 15 times negative 3 equals negative 45. Parentheses, subtract. 15 minus 15, what happens? Cancels out. 25 minus negative 45. Minus minus turns into a plus 70. Now back, throw back to what we used to do long division in fifth grade, right? 70 is what we call my remainder, okay? And you wanna take the remainder and put it over the divisor. Y minus three. And you did it. You did your first long division example. Good job. <laughs> okay. Let's try it again. So I'm going to set up my problem. I'm going to make sure it's in descending order, which it is, x squared, x, and then no x at all. And then I'm going to put my divisor on the outside, 3x plus 1. And we're going to start the process from scratch. What times 3x equals 
15x squared. So 3 times what equals 15? 5. Good. x times what equals x squared? x. So that is 5x. Getting the hang of it? What am I going to do with that 5x? I'm going to multiply it by what's on the outside. So 5x times 3x is 15x squared. 5x times 1 is 5x. Subtract. 15x minus 15x squared cancels out. Yay, I'm doing it correctly. 8 minus 5, 3. Good. We didn't have to do a minus minus this time. So this is where we bring down the minus 12. We take our deep breath. And we start over again. What times 3x equals 3x? 1. Good. 1 times 3x equals 3x. 1 times 1 equals 1. Boom. Subtract. 3x minus 3x cancels. Negative 12 minus 1 equals negative 13. What is that negative 13 called? It's called a remainder, okay? And I put it over the divisor. I know you're like, this lesson is not work. It's fine. You'll be all right. We'll get through it together. I should make that a song. Okay. Divise. There's a divisor and there's a div dividend. I think there's a dividend. I hope. <laughs> um, okay. So our setup, everything's in descending order. There's no gaps to fill in. Because remember that first example, there'd be those gaps. Okay. So try this one on your own. Pause the video. Okay. What times x equals x squared? Well, x times x equals x squared. Great. I'm going to take that purple x. I'm going to multiply it by the outside. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Doop. Doop. So the x squared is canceled out. I like that. And then 5x minus 3x. 5x minus minus 3x. So 5x plus 3x. It's going to give me 8x. I'm going to go ahead and bring down that minus 28. I'm going to take my deep breath. Oh, man. I made that go backwards. Uh, no. Oh, how did it go backwards? Can I do that? Anyway, sorry, but it's fine. Okay, taking my deep breath, restarting. What times x equals 8x? Well, 8. So 8 times x is 8x. Eight, 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. Subtract. 8 minus 8 cancels out. Negative 28 minus negative 24 minus negative turns into a plus. So that's plus 24, so negative 4 is my remainder x minus 3. Yay! Synthetic division. Everybody loves synthetic division so much more than long division. So get ready. We like this one. Um, I would read all that stuff, but I'm not. <laughs> you read it. I'm just going to do just going to do the video. Um, or do the examples because I'd be explaining that stuff to my students and they'd just be like, why? All right. Um, what you're first going to do is, is you're going to fill in your coefficients. So the three, the negative one, I put a zero in because there's no squared and then the five and then the negative one. Okay. Again, you always need to put in zeros when you're missing an exponent. So I have a four exponent, a three exponent. I'm missing a two exponent. So there's my zero. I have a five, I have the one exponent and then I have the no exponent. So then, just be tripping people up too, if my divisor is x plus 2, I need to use negative 2, okay? Because the factors, when you set it equal to 0, x plus 2 equals 0, set it equal to 0, x equals negative 2. You need to use the opposite, okay? But once you got that down, you're going to bring down your first number, you're going to multiply the outside number times the bottom number, negative 6. You're going to add those two numbers, negative 1 plus negative 6 is negative 7, and you're going to repeat the process. Multiply the two outside numbers, get positive 14, add the 0 and the 14. That gets 14. Multiply the outside numbers. Negative 2 times 14. I'm going to get negative 28. Add the inside numbers. 5 plus negative 28. That's negative 23. Multiply the outside numbers. Negative 2 times negative 23. That's going to give me positive 46. Add the inside numbers. Negative 1 plus 46. 45. So the way that you write your answer, because now I'm done, right? That last number has to be your um, remainder. Um, and I just take the coefficient. So my original problem started off with x to the fourth power. So my answer is going to start off with x to the third. I take it down one. Okay. So my first coefficient is three. So instead of three x to the fourth, I'm going to say three x to the third. My second coefficient is negative seven x squared. And then 14 x and a negative 23 and then remainder 45 
over x plus 2. You see how that works? I take my uh, degree down one and then I um, use the coefficients accordingly. Last number is always going to be my remainder. So easy. Okay, so sometimes your teachers will ask you to do synthetic substitution. Sometimes I'll ask my students to do synthetic substitution. Synthetic substitution is the same thing. But it's the same process, I should say, but your answer means that P of negative 2, when I plug negative 2 into that problem, my answer is going to be 45. So on a graph, negative 2 comma 45 would, would go into that, would be plotted, would be a point for this function. I cannot talk. <laughs> um, so that's what synthetic substitution is. So the same process, you're just looking at the last number, which is 45. Okay. Ooh, a fraction. Don't we love some fractions? Okay, so they already gave me my divisor. Um as x equals so i do not have to change the sign i have to change the sign when it's in in like x minus some or yeah x minus something or x plus something but if it's x equals then i leave the number just the same i'm gonna start my pattern off the same way i'm gonna bring down my first number and i'm just gonna ask myself what's a third of six well two but it has to be negative right so i'm gonna add those two inside numbers i'm gonna get negative 27 and i'm gonna ask myself what's a third of 27 it's 9, positive, because negative times negative is positive, right? Add the inside number, 0 plus 9. That's going to give me 9. What's a third of 9? Well, that's 3, negative 3, right? Because um, negative times positive is a negative. I'm going to add the inside numbers. I'm going to get negative 6. And then I'm going to ask myself again, what's a third of negative 6? And when I do that, I'm going to get positive 2, because negative negative cancels out to be a positive. And then my remainder is going to end up being a 7. So I'm looking at my original problem. My original problem is a fourth degree. So my answer is going to be a third degree. <laughs> get it, third degree. Um, and my remainder is 7. So um, 6x cubed minus 27x plus 9x minus 6, remainder 7. If you are doing synthetic substitution, p of negative 1 third equals 7. When I plug in negative 1 third into the problem, I get out a 7. The ordered pair negative one third comma seven is on the graph. Okay, <laughs> uh, you need to try this one on your own. So pause the video. Don't be crazy. Don't be crazy. You got this. Okay, so we're gonna do bring down the five. What's one fifth of five? One. Good. Uh, nine plus one is ten. What's one fifth of 10? Two, two plus three is five. So my original problem was an x squared. So I'm gonna take it down to just an x. Let me use those coefficients. Last number is always my remainder. If your teacher is asking you to do synthetic substitution, p of negative one fifth equals five. Yay. Okay, um, two more slides and then we're done. Sometimes I'm afraid I'm like not recording. <laughs> Every video actually. Um, so last but not least, determine if it's a factor. Basically, if the remainder is zero, the answer is yes, it is a factor. If the remainder is anything else in the world, uh, it is not a factor. That's what those words say. Okay, so we're gonna do synthetic again. Multiply the outsides, add the insides. Multiply the outsides, add the insides. Um, what's my remainder? My remainder is 12. Is it a factor? No, it is not a factor. P of 3 does not equal 0, so x minus 3 is not a factor. Okay? Boop. What is the remainder? Is it 0? Yes, it is. Okay? P of, zero, P of negative 4 equals 0, so x plus 4 is a factor. That's it. You did it. Okay, make sure that you are remembering with synthetic uh, division and synthetic substitution and is it a factor that uh, x plus 4, instead of using a positive 4, I use a negative 4, right? Um, instead, or, and then also when you're setting up the problem, send it up from descending order, so 4, 3, the exponent's 4, and then the 3, and then the 2 is missing, so I, that's why I put a 0 in there, and then I have a 2, and then I have an 8, okay? So the setup of your problem is initially super important because it'll mess up the rest of your work. You know math be like that sometimes, so... What am I going to tell you to do? Go back to the video and see if you can get the answers without my help. Oh, great. I'm so glad that you know. And if not, I'll see you in the next.